Okay, welcome back to the virtual FCS uh, tutorial series. This is tutorial 1.3, and in this video we will demonstrate an example showing uh, the polarization of a fuel cell stack. We're in the OpenModelica connection editor, and we've loaded the virtual FCS library, as is demonstrated in tutorial 1.1. And in this video, we will look into the examples and uh, have a look at uh, the polarized fuel cell stack example. Uh, so I'll just double click on that to load it into our modeling environment. And if you're not familiar with the fuel cells or fuel cell modeling, uh, the polarization curve is a kind of standard method for characterizing uh, the performance of a fuel cell stack. And it basically compares the uh, voltage of the stack on the y-axis with the current or current density uh, on the x-axis. So the goal of this uh, model is to help us generate uh, such a curve and uh, yeah, examine how, how our fuel cell stack is performing. So uh, we can have a look at, uh, at the star of the show in this model, the uh, fuel cell stack. So uh, I'm gonna click on it to select it and then right click and say open class so we can get a, a good idea for what's uh, going on in the model here. So we can see this, this consists of three uh, models in one and uh, let's just start at the top. So at the top, we have our uh, electrical uh, equivalent circuit model. Uh, so here on the, uh, on the left, there's a potential source that uh, describes both the uh, equilibrium uh, Nernst potential and the uh, activation and concentration uh, over potential losses. Uh, we have a current sensor that uh, allows us to read in the current for flowing to, to other blocks. Uh, a resistor um, simulating the, the ohmic resistance uh, in the cell, and one uh, RC uh, uh, circuit for the uh, charge transfer and double layer um, effects. So this electrical model uh, is coupled uh, using the, the current and through Faraday's law uh, to, the, uh, to the consumption of hydrogen uh, on the, the left here, and oxygen uh, on the right. And we can see that these are connected to, uh, to ports, so we can flow um, either hydrogen uh, on the left or air uh, on the right through the cell. And uh, our mass sinks uh, act as, um, as uh, yeah, sinks uh, in, those, in those fluid circuits. Uh, then finally down here uh, on the bottom, we have the uh, a thermal uh, model, and here we're pumping uh, coolant uh, through a, a pipe or a series of pipes uh, that have some thermal conductivity and uh, heat capacity of the uh, of the stack uh, connected to a, a prescribed heat flow, which is linked to the uh, thermodynamic losses uh, from the from the uh, voltage of the the cell, as well as uh, joule heating due to the flow of current. So that's a, uh, a quick overview uh, into the fuel cell stack model. Uh, we can also see that, um, that in order for this to run, uh, we need uh, some, some external support. So there has to be some hydrogen supplied, there has to be some air supplied, there has to be some cooling uh, medium, and we have uh, some subsystems to, uh, to help define that. So uh, these uh, subsystems are defined over here in our, uh, in our library browser in the subsystems menu. And if I just click on that, click on hydrogen, we can see here uh, our subsystem hydrogen class that uh, allows us to encapsulate that and make it a little bit easier to, uh, to build models. So for the sake of time, uh, in this tutorial, I'm not going to go through all of the details of uh, each of these subsystems. There are examples here uh, on the left uh, for testing each, each one of these. Uh, so if you have, have time and are, and are interested, you can look into the details of those um, on your own. Uh, the other thing I want to highlight here is that uh, each of these subsystems contains uh, some components that need power. Uh, either it's compressors or pumps or heaters or 
all sorts of things. And in order to provide the uh, the power necessary for, for all of those balance of plant components, uh, we have a low voltage uh, battery pack down here at the bottom uh, connected to a, a battery management system that helps to regulate that. Okay, so finally we need uh, some uh, current source to, uh, to uh, act as a, a load on the uh, fuel cell stack. So we have that uh, up here as a, defined as a ramp current. Uh, so I'll just double click on that and we can have a look at the, um, at the parameters. And here we see that the uh, value of the current is uh, going up to 95% of the fuel cell stack's limiting current value. Um, uh, designated here as IL, and that this is uh, over a, a period of 500 seconds, and uh, it starts at time uh, t equals 10 seconds. Okay, so let's uh, set up and run the simulation. So we'll come up here to uh, our green uh, S in a white box and click on the simulation setup. Um, as we saw, the time uh, the the ramp current starts at time uh, ten and goes for five hundred seconds, so it's a total of five hundred and ten seconds. And uh, we'll solve this in a uh, in a time interval uh, dt equals one second. So we'll just change that to five hundred and ten and interval equals one, and uh, we can click on OK and solve this uh, solve this model. Okay, so our model has solved, and we've moved to the uh, plotting tab. And uh, if we want to create a uh, polarization curve for the fuel cell stack, that is a parametric plot. So we can come up to our toolbar and click on the uh, little swirly icon, which uh, is a new parametric plot window. Let's go ahead and do that. And uh, we first need to define the x-axis for the parametric plot. So we'll come into uh, fuel cell stack and uh, find our current sensor and click on I, current. And uh, we want to plot that versus the uh, voltage of the uh, stack. So we'll find our positive pin, pin P, and uh, expand that and select uh, voltage P. And there we go. So this is a, uh, a kind of typical shape for a, um, a fuel cell polarization curve. Uh, on the left, uh, we have a, a fast fall off from the open circuit uh, potential or open circuit voltage. Um, and this uh, reflects the activation uh, losses uh, from the electrochemical uh, reaction kinetics. Uh, in the uh, middle region, there's a more or less linear region, uh, which is uh, governed mainly by the ohmic resistance uh, losses in the cell. And as we approach the end, there's a, a more uh, more of an avalanche fall off, uh, which is linked to the uh, concentration and mass transport uh, over potential uh, in the uh, in the stack. Okay, so that's a, a brief overview of the uh, polarized fuel cell stack uh, example. Clearly, there's a lot uh, more to, to see and, and do, uh, and we will investigate that in uh, future video tutorials.